That title was fine. Don't shout at me. But if you do, I'm sorted. Got a guy who can get me a new identity. What was he Ronald doing? Gotta show this meme. And so as always, I want to thank you for watching my last video and the input under my last video. YouTube channels are simply nothing without the community of people who take the time to watch the videos and interact. And I had the usual mix of wit, comedy and educational input under the last video. Thank you very much. In this week's Reddit Sports Science, a discussion of transferable fitness attributes featuring Eddie Hall, Matt Does Fitness and others. YouTube recommended this video. I clicked and here we are. This video is not a critique of Matt Does Fitness or Eddie Hall's content per se. It is not some sort of content review. Imagine me making judgments on the world strongest man. That would be silly. As silly as this. Red Bull gives you wings. For some people who may want to know what that piece of equipment is called, it's technically known as the Devon Ball. Add that to the official dictionary, please. And so when it comes to this crossover from Matt Does Fitness and Eddie Hall, I can't even make cheeky jokes because they make them themselves. Pound Shop Avengers. Great film, but let's just say your popcorn won't last a duration. A tad long. I want to simply present to you an idea for discussion and debate that came into my noggin from watching this crossover video. And it's an issue that I've not yet discussed on this channel. Drum roll transferability or the transfer principle or the question I want to pose to you how does your form of training affect your ability to perform other tasks if how does our training discipline how we train affect how we perform in the daily challenges physical challenges thrown at us in life and also perhaps performing other specialist challenges or sports we will delve into models and theories later that sounds like fun and so Matt Does Fitness is one of the fastest growing fitness channels there are right now I'm sure you've all heard of it approaching one and a half million subscribers. It's common for him to have millions of views per video. And again, my video is not a discussion of his overall content or anything like that. However, I do feel like I need to address the elephant in the room. He is a Jim Sharker, which is a perfect segue to this week's musical offering from Jim Sharker, Steve, the knee joint cook, who made a dope video on Instagram. I added my own soundtrack. Nailed it. This video is referring to their challenge type content. Basically, fitness YouTubers turned into the crystal maze. Anyone? Anyone? Eddie Hall is, of course, one of the world's strongest men, winners, and deadlift unit. His arms say all that needs to be said, really. And he's been extremely successful in building a large YouTube channel, which again focuses on many issues. But one thing that he does do is undertake different disciplines and workouts, and they're essentially led by what you would call noticeable people within those fields. Quick slideshow. All I'm thinking is Gulliver's Travels. Steady, steady, hold it, hold it. And this is Dr. Amazing Steffi Cohen. I like how you say it. I'm gonna start saying it like that, doctor. Doctor. Yeah. Doctor. Both wrong. I pronounce the word doctor hack. And so I have a video referencing Steffi and the electrical muscle stimulator machines. We have gymnast Niall Wilson, AKA the keep the straight face while you're watching this video challenge. And so I'm not a fan of the challenges where you train like The Rock or eat like The Rock for a day, for example. I trained like Michael B. Jordan. And this happened. Challenges generally ain't my sort of thing, unless it's the bottle cap challenge. However, there is this one type of challenge where people undertake workouts from different disciplines, which is actually genuinely intriguing, anecdotal, but very interesting. And what I will say is that both of these guys have very good humor running through their videos. And in this crossover, there is a lot of good humor to it. Which made me chuckle. Background done, good. And so obviously developing the way that you train and improving your performance in the way that you train, super compensation. And super compensation is the exercise science principle and model for these physical benefits we attain after a period of effective training is of course a key focus. However, how that affects you performing daily tasks and daily physical challenges that may be presented to you is also essentially at the heart of why we train. And these crossover videos are extreme examples if you like as they focus on specialisms such as bodybuilding versus CrossFit or versus strongman or powerlifting for example and that is absolutely a valid point of discussion that I'd like to see below. However, it's not just these specialisms that we can think of, the transferability of the way that we train. Of course, we can apply 
how we train to the more daily and generic, if you like, physical challenges placed upon us. And that can branch into many areas, such as the transfer of skills, the transfer of movements, the transfer of attributes we train, such as power and strength and how that may apply to other principles. So with Matt Does Fitness, how did his traditional barbell lifting apply or transfer to him lifting the strongman equipment, the different shapes? <laughs> So awkward. That's what strong man is, picking up awkward things. Carrying and weird massive. Trying to carry them as long and as far and heavy as you can. The different width of the bar, the different movements. That's it, to the chest. Go, and up. It's so wide, it's so like awkward to hold them out. The lifting the stones, the different shape and movements of that movement. So, straight arms underneath, pull it to the chest, and then you're catching it. Re grip. If you can, lock your fingers. And you've got it. How did his squatting, how did his pushing movements that he trained in his regular training, for example, benefit him when he wanted to perform those types of new exercises and movements in the strongman discipline? I heard a minute ago, I heard you say, I'm, I quote, the strongest person he's ever trained with, so. I mean, yes. In a way. In a way. And ultimately, what all of this does is brings me back to the idea of cross-training, training multiple disciplines, training multiple physical challenges within your yearly training program, and essentially how important that can be. And so in other channels, we do also see this. However, they're slightly different in that they don't try each other's disciplines, but people from these different specialisms compete in physical challenges against each other. Bodybuilder versus CrossFit versus arm wrestler versus strongman is a video title that forces me to click. Dish Strength Wars, I got a video idea for you. It's called Devon versus Devon versus Devon versus Devon. Basically, take all the Devons, put them on an island, give them a Devon ball and let the fun begin. And this video in particular is very interesting, partly because of the safety issues that they raise and all the preparation work that goes into someone performing a backflip, especially when someone is carrying the sort of mass that Eddie Hall is and trying to prevent injuries when he is learning a new skill such as the backflip. 175 kilo, 28 stone body weight. We couldn't afford Eddie twisting an ankle in the pit or worse, landing on his neck. Just jump back and try and just lean, come back to like and I really think that gymnastics is a great addition to fitness YouTube and channels such as Niall Wilson are a great addition. Now, gymnastics is very much underrated when it comes to essentially a strength discipline or a strength and conditioning discipline. And we have, for example, George St. Pierre, the, the world champion, the great MMA fighter who used to train gymnastics as part of his strength and conditioning for certain fights. And so I think it's a really highly interesting discipline that is noticeably doing well on YouTube now and most certainly deserves deserves to be doing well in terms of visibility. And the actual video where Eddie Hall crossovers with Niall Wilson brings up some very interesting points in relation to fitness and health. And so here comes the boring bit. You absolutely have my permission to turn off now as I'm gonna discuss theory and models. When it comes to the transferability of the way you train to other movements, to other disciplines, to other physical challenges, we can think about the motor programs that you are developing through your training. Motor programs are essentially a series of subroutines that you are organizing into routines to perform a movement that you are developing through your training. And these will become stored in your long-term memory when you therefore need to perform these skills. And I would tell you the rest, but I forgot. And so when we think of motor programs, essentially it's the way that our brain is controlling movements within the body and we're training our body to store those movements, if you like, so they become automatic when we need to perform them. But there are different models when it comes to our performance of movements, such as the closed loop theory and the open loop theory. Decisions are made in the brain before performing the skill. All information for one movement is sent in a single message. The message is therefore taken in by the muscles to then perform the movement. And so this open loop theory is more attributed to fast movements, where your body has little time to react or change. It's very automated if you like. Feedback may or may not be available, but it does not control the action. Closed loop theory, decisions are made in the brain. Not all the information is sent together, so that differs to the open loop theory. Information is received by the muscles to initiate the movement. Feedback is always available and is vital to correct movement patterns. And these essentially refer to the performance of slow and fast movements and how kind of automated the system is and how our brain and and our body reacts to our need to perform fast and slow movements. But I want to get into something else, which is called Motor Schema by Schmidt. And it states that all of the information needed to make a movement decision is stored in our brain as a long-term memory. And Schmidt suggested that motor programs are, can be clustered, but are also changeable to respond to the situation. He also stated that the larger the motor program that is achieved through practice, 
that Egypt can be adapted to new situations. And so essentially all these models can be quite confusing and I didn't go into extreme depth in each model as that would put you to sleep. However, all I need you to take away is this basic idea. When we are training in whatever form you train, as we're all different, you are developing these movement patterns which are stored in your memory. So when you go to execute a movement, you're not having to break it down incredibly slowly. So when you're going to perform a movement, essentially it's automated. Now there is a difference between faster and slower movements and adapting and changing, which is where some of these different models come in. But here's the application to your lifting. I'm sure you all have certain lifts that you train. If you're going to perform another movement or physical challenge, how will your competency with the movements that you have developed through your training transfer and be applicable to those other challenges? Some more questions for your homework. What are the most transferable training methods? What are the least transferable training methods? I'm James Linker, finished. Finished.